Hi, this is Will with NDL Coding. Today we will be installing Visual SVN Server on our Windows 10 development machine. We will then create a repository in the server and configure Eclipse to use SVN as a source control repository and create a project in Eclipse that we will then commit to the repository that we created in Visual SVN Server. SVN, which is short for Subversion, is one of several source control options developers have. Source control is a tool that developers use to facilitate maintaining a history of revisions to source code as well as allowing developers to maintain several versions of one piece of software at the same time. This technique is known as branching. Source control is also a useful tool for developers working with a team of other developers as it facilitates collaboration using a single code base. We'll get started by using Google to search for Visual SVN so that we can download the most recent version of Visual SVN Server. Go to visualsvn.com and we're going to select download for Visual SVN Server. Visual SVN Server is a licensed product but if you're using it on a machine that is not using Active Directory and you're not expecting to use Active Directory for single sign-on purposes to the repository you don't need to license the application. It is free to use even for commercial use. So we're going to go ahead and download the 64-bit version of the application and launch the executable file that's been downloaded. As you can tell from the setup wizard, this is Visual SVN Server version 3.42. This is the most recent version of Visual SVN available as of September 2015. So we'll click Next, accept the license agreement, and click Next again. We're going to take the default option here to install Visual SVN Server and the administration tools. And we're going to select the standard edition. Uh, again, the enterprise edition would be needed if you were planning on licensing it for use on a machine using Active Directory or if you want to use Active Directory for single sign-on. But since we're installing this on the development machine, we're not going to need to do that. We'll click Next and take the default um, setup locations. Again, it's going to be installed in C program files and it's going to create a repositories under C repositories. We're going to use server port 443 and we will use an HTTPS connection. We'll click Next again and finish to start the install. The install only takes a few seconds, so we'll go ahead and close the web browser out. and we're going to select the option to start Visual SVN Server Manager when the setup wizard is finished. As the Visual SVN Server Manager launches, you'll notice that the HTTP service is running and that there are currently zero users and zero groups configured. We're going to go ahead and click on at Create New User and I'm going to create a user for myself along with the password. With that done, you can click on Users. You now see that I am the only user on the server and that we have no repositories. So we'll go ahead and right click on Repositories and select Create a New Repository. We're going to take the default here to create a regular repository. It will prompt us when we click Next here to enter a repository name. I'm going to call this repository NDL underscore coding. I don't like to use spaces in SVN because it's accessed using HTTP and the URLs tend to get a little funky when you have spaces there. I'm not a hundred percent sure that it would let me have a space in the repository name. I do know that the folders in the repository can have spaces and the URLs look a little bit funky so I tend to avoid that. So we'll go ahead and click next here and move on to setting up the repository structure. 
we're going to create an empty repository which is the recommended option rather than a single project repository as I plan on keeping all of our example code here and then I'm going to make sure that it says that all subversion users have read write access of course the only user that we've created is will and this again is users within the subversion server not necessarily users of the machine itself take a moment to notice the URL displayed for the repository this will come in handy later as we configure Eclipse to use SVN as its source control repository as you can see the URL in this case is https colon slash slash the name of the PC that it's installed on slash SVN slash the name of the repository it's important to note here that most developers probably will opt not to install their SVN server on their development machine. Most developers will prefer to have SVN installed on a dedicated server, a remote PC, preferably something that's backed up on a regular basis. I personally chose to run my Visual SVN server on an Amazon VPS instance so it runs in the cloud and I can access my source code from anywhere whether I'm at home in the office at a client's office or on the road somewhere next we'll fire up Eclipse and configure the subversive SVN plugin to allow us to use SVN as our source control repository to accomplish this, we'll navigate to the Help menu and select Install New Software. We'll go ahead and click the drop-down and select the Eclipse download link for the current release, which is Mars in our case. Then we're going to select Collaboration and expand that. It's right here close to the top. I'll scroll back up to it. We'll click the arrow beside it to expand Collaboration and we're going to scroll down and select the subversion SVN team provider put a check mark beside that and click next we'll click next again accept the license agreement and finally finish it'll take a moment to download shouldn't take but a few seconds here and it's going to want to restart so we'll tell it to click we'll tell it yes and Eclipse will restart as Eclipse restarts we're going to need to do some additional configuration I'm going to go select import from the file menu and then select project from SVN under SVN at which point it's going to ask us which SVN connector we're going to use I'm going to go ahead and select the native Java HL 1.8.13 64-bit that's the current version that's available today, uh, September 2015. And we'll click Next, Next, Accept License Agreements, and Finish so it can install a few extra things. And we'll click the OK button there as it finishes installing. It's going to want to restart one more time. We'll allow that. Now when Eclipse starts back up, we'll go ahead and create a project and commit that to our new repository. To do this, we'll go up to the File menu, select New, and then select Project. Go ahead and click Android and Android Application Project and click Next. We'll name our application something test-worthy. In this case, we'll, we'll go with NDL Coding uh, underscore example or SVN example and then we'll go ahead and change the package name because we always like to put our domain URL at the beginning it's a Java thing I understand that's weird we'll take the rest of these as defaults and click next 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 blank activity next and then ultimately finish As our new project gets created, we'll notice that it actually creates two distinct projects. One for the project that we're, we're doing for Android application, plus a dependency project called AppCompatV7. This is, is a library of sorts. 
that adds some additional features to uh, to Android after a certain version. We're not going to really worry about the app compat uh, project at this time. That's something that's very easy to regenerate. In this case, we're only worried about adding the NDL config SVN example to the repository. So to do that, we'll right click on the project here and select team from our drop down list and share project. We're going to go ahead and select SVN because that's the source control repository we created and click next. At this point it's prompting us to enter the URL for the repository. You'll remember that we saw that earlier when we finished configuring the SVN repository. In this case I'm going to enter HTTPS colon slash slash local host instead of the name of my PC because if we change the name of the PC at some point in the future, it could cause problems with our project. So we'll do localhost slash svn slash ndl coding. Next, we're going to go ahead and enter the username and password. I created a username Will. I'll enter my password. And I'll click on Save Authentication. We'll go ahead and click Next, at which point it will try to access the repository and find out that the SSL certificate doesn't appear to be valid. We know that this is a repository we want to use, so we'll go ahead and tell it to trust always, and that will let it move forward and we shouldn't be prompted again in the future as a result. Uh, you'll notice that it put the project name on the end of the, uh, the URL here. We're, we're given the option to do simple mode or advanced mode. Advanced mode is something that you might use if you're in more of a collaboration environment, if you're planning on doing branching and whatnot. We're going to leave it on simple mode for the uh, purposes of this demonstration. We'll go ahead and click next and then finish. And this will add the, the project to the repository. And now Subversive will prompt us to commit the project to the, uh, the repository. So once we add it, we need to commit it. And you can see everything that it wants to commit, all the files within the project. So we'll leave the defaults there, everything checked, and click OK. Um, we'll just click off of this. We don't want to create a uh, password for anything. So we'll click No. And now our project is committed to the Visual SVN repository. If you look on the left side at the icons, you'll know that the icons look a little bit different because that denotes that, that the source in question is now under source control. We'll go into one of the uh, source files here, the activity main XML. We'll go ahead and make a change here to the activity main XML. We'll add a test comment and, and save, our, uh, save our change. And what we're doing here is demonstrating how Subversive changes the, uh, the layout over here. You see it's got a little greater than symbol that denotes a change to the local source from what it had either synced from the repository or committed from the to the repository. So this basically denotes a change that's been made. We can right click on the project and it will give us the option to commit this change to the repository. So we'll right click up here, we'll go to team and we'll select commit at the top. gives us an opportunity to leave a comment. These comments are stored with the revision history and it makes it useful when you go back to look at different revisions to see what has been changed. So generally a developer will leave a comment here if it's something important or they want to let the team know when they're looking back what's changed or what the developer was thinking when they made the change. We'll go ahead now and exit Eclipse so that we can take a look at what has been committed to the source code repository. We'll click the, the exit button here and then confirm that we do want to exit Eclipse. We'll go ahead and use the Windows 10 search to find the Visual SVN Manager or Server Manager. We'll open this up and go into the repository. And once we're in the repository you see that we have a folder named for our project. And if we expand this folder 
we'll see all the various source files and objects that were committed to the repository. You can click through some of these and, and see the, the different items in the various folder structures. We'll go ahead and close this out and fire up Eclipse again and we'll demonstrate very quickly how we can commit changes to Eclipse and roll back to, to various uh, points in the revision history. Once Eclipse opens up, we'll expand our, uh, our project a bit here and we'll find a couple things that we want to change. We'll go ahead and delete that text view from the uh, activity main XML file and save the change. And we'll jump into the, uh, there's Eclipse still doing some startup things. We'll jump into the main activity Java and we'll accidentally delete, uh, we'll add a comment in here and then maybe we'll delete that uh, menu inflator in the, um, in the subroutine above. Got a couple of comments and we're going to delete out this close and save and you can see that we have some changes over here on the left indicated by the greater than symbols under the source and under the res folders. If we go into the team we can say okay we want to revert everything um, that's in here or we can just select items based on what's checked to revert back to the original uh, the original working copy not necessarily the original on the server at this point. Important distinction but relatively irrelevant for the uh, purposes of this demonstration. Go ahead and click OK and you see that it's changed back that main activity Java file. We'll open that back up and you see our comments we entered in and saved are gone and the get menu inflator line is back. So that's good. As opposed to right clicking on the project and going to a uh, team and, and revert, you can actually right click on an individual item and select revert from there. We'll go ahead and do that and open up um, the activity main XML one more time and you see that our test comment that we had deleted in the last step is back. So we're going to go to the team menu again and take a look at the, uh, the other options we have. We can select show history which will allow us to see the history of revisions for a given item or for the project as a whole. So we'll go ahead and click show history here. And the window opens up at the bottom and we see that we have three revisions. The first being when we added the project to Subversion. The second when we committed all of our source to Subversion. And then of the, course the third where we added the test comment. Now you can actually roll back your working copy that you have in Eclipse to any of these previous versions. So we'll go ahead and right click on version 2 here and we're going to select update. Oops, let's bring this context menu up one more time. We will right click and select update 2 from the list and that's going to that's going to give us the version, the revision 2 from the source control to work with. And when we do this, you'll note that the test comment that we entered and committed for version 3 has disappeared. Of course, we can continue working in the, uh, the SVN history tab down here. We can also uh, go back to the, the project itself, right click on it, and uh, go to team. We'll do that now. From the team menu, we can actually select update or update to a position or a revision. So we don't want to update back to a different revision, so we'll just select update to update to the head revision, which is revision 3. And you see there are test comments back. And with that, we come to the end of our video. We'll go ahead and exit out of Eclipse here and uh, get back to our desktop. We hope you've enjoyed this video setting up Visual SVN and SVN as a source control in your Eclipse development environment. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe for future videos. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. For a full list of links to the software we installed today, please see the video description.